You are about to listen to a message from Apostle Joseph Minta of Touch World Ministries International. Be blessed. Dreams from the devil. It's almost unbelievable that the easiest, easiest, the dreams that are easiest to deal with is dreams from the devil. I'm going to show you why it's very easy to deal with dreams from the devil. The reason is simple. You see, the, 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 the devil the devil is not the problem of the believer. See, the, the believer's problem is not Satan. The believer's problem is ignorance. Ignorance. Ignorance is stronger than Satan in a believer's life. You know the place of the devil and you know his status currently. Then you appreciate what I'm saying. We pray, oh God, that you help us to open our hearts to receive your word the soil of our heart. Let it bring forth fruit that will abide. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for um, today. Uh, we are so grateful for the gift of life. And uh, we thank God for how far he has brought us. Hallelujah. So, um, last week, we were looking at dreams from the heart and from the body. And by way of recap, let me just um, just take you through a little bit of what last we did, we, we covered last week with regards to dreams from the heart. We saw that, you know, there are four main projectors projecting images or who can project images onto our mind screen and these four projectors are god the devil our hearts and our bodies so there can be dreams from god and not all dreams are from god there are some dreams from god there are some dreams that come from the devil there are some dreams that come from our own hearts and there are some dreams that come from our bodies and we need to know the nature and the characteristics of each one of these categories of dreams and then how to deal with them. And we've, we've, we've looked at uh, dreams from God. Then we went on to look at dreams from the heart and the body. And today we are looking at dreams from the devil. Dreams from the devil. So last week we saw seven types of dreams from the heart. We saw self-revelation dreams, desire dreams, fear or anxiety dreams, memories dreams, soul tie dreams, conflicting dreams, and flashing dreams. These are the seven types of dreams from the heart. You can get the teaching and then listening to it is really going to help you. And so dreams from the devil as we are looking at today. Now, it is it is amazing, or not, not amazing, but um, it's almost unbelievable that the easiest, easiest, the dreams that are easiest to deal with is dreams from the devil. Those are the dreams that are very easy to deal with. They are easier to deal with dreams from the devil than dreams from your heart, your own heart. And I'm going to show you why it's very easy to deal with dreams from the devil. The reason is simple. You see, the, 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 devil, the devil is not the problem of the believer. You see, the, the believer's problem is not Satan. The believer's problem is ignorance. Ignorance. Ignorance is stronger than Satan in a believer's life. Believe ignorance is stronger than Satan in a believer's life. Because if you know the place of the devil and you know his status currently, then you appreciate what I'm saying. But that is not to say that the devil cannot, you know, uh, if we permit him, he cannot carry out certain things in our lives. If we permit him, he can only do them without permission. There are rules of engagement. You know, I preached a message called 
rules of engagement, when I was talking about spiritual warfare, I spent, I spent almost um, 18 weeks, 18 Sundays, talking about spiritual warfare. You can get the whole series. It's going to help you. The rules of engagement, you know, I'm talking about his rights. The devil too has certain rights, and we must know them. Then we must know our rights. If the, the devil has rights, that's why the demon told Jesus Christ that have you come to destroy us before the time? That was a demon who knew his rights. That you can't touch me before the time. It's, it has been agreed. It's, it's an agreement that you must respect the terms of the agreement. There's a communique that was issued when Christ died and rose from the dead. There was a communique. And when I say communique, you know, when there's war, and the war comes to an end. The warring factions, the parties, if they smoke the peace pipe, they come out with a communique. And the communique is more like the agreements or the, the terms, you know, that settle the war. Now, in this communique that came out after Jesus Christ died and rose from the dead, that communique, if you look through the entire New Testament, there is not even one scripture. Listen, there is not even one scripture in the New Testament that talks about the power of the devil in a believer's life. Not even one. If you check through all the New Testament, you will not find one scripture after Jesus Christ died and rose from the dead talking about the devil's power in a believer's life. Whenever Satan and the believer meet in the New Testament, it is talking about his deception, his wiles. The devil's power is only spoken of in connection with those who are in the world, those who are not in Christ. But those who are in Christ, only one word is used, the wiles, the strategies, the methodology, the um, schemes, the schemes of the enemy. So, Look at scriptures like Colossians 1.13. Colossians 1.13 talks about the how we have been translated. Colossians 1.13. What does it say? It says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of Islam. Delivered us from the power of darkness. That's, that settles it, right? Colossians 2.15, the same Colossians 2.15. I'm, I'm, I'm just letting you know the, the details of the communique. What is, what is in the written agreement so that you know. Colossians 2.15, it says, um, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Having disarmed. What we say disarm, to disarm means to, um, to take your weapons or to be relieved of your weapon so he disarmed them he took away their weapons and their armor their armor you know and so when it comes to the believer this is the point of reference he has disarmed principalities and powers <laughs> now hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 to 15 hebrews 2 14 and 15 talks about uh, what does this say? It says, In as much then as the children were have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had past tense. The power of death, that is the devil. Him who had. Know him who has. Him who had. That he might destroy him who had the power of death. That's the devil. And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Okay, so these are the terms of the communique that by reason of Jesus' death and resurrection, he has destroyed the one who had the power of death, the devil. To destroy here doesn't mean to cease to exist. It means to be completely incapacitated. Or to be completely rendered completely impotent, weakened forever. Hello. So that is 
that is that is that is the communicate. The believer. So, so I want I want you to I want you to see it in context. That's why I'm saying that dreams from the devil should be the easiest to do with. Very easy to do with that. I want you to put it in your mind and don't think that dreams of the devil were very powerful and very scary and very complex. It's very easy to deal with them. Because the believer is not under the control or the power of the devil. It's nowhere in scripture. The believer is never, never portrayed as being at the mercy of demons or of the devil. It's nowhere in scripture like that. Power is in the hands of the believer. You know, when I preached about from uh, 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 zeros, zeros pretending to be heroes, I said that power is now in the hands of the believer to make the devil something or nothing. In other words, you can make him something or nothing in your life. The choice is yours. Because you have the, the authority to do that, the power to do that, to make him nothing or something. Therefore, demonic dreams are the easiest to do it. Do you know, the devil cannot touch a believer without his permission. 1 John 5, 18 and 19. 1 John 5, 18 and 19. It says, um, We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. That verse 19 says, The whole world lies in the embrace of the wicked one. But then his, verse 18 says that he that is born again keeps himself and the wicked one cannot touch him. So the believer has a right to open for the devil to come in or to shut him out. Now, don't, don't rejoice yet. Don't rejoice yet because Adam number one, two had the same right. Adam could have banished the, de- the devil from the garden forever. But the devil managed to use tricks and deception to get Adam to use his weapons against himself. And that is where our problem comes in. The problem of ignorance. Not knowing the tricks of the devil and how he can even get us sometimes to use our weapons on ourselves or on our brothers. So, what are his rights? What are Satan's rights? This one I'm talking about his due. Have you heard the phrase, the expression, give the devil his due? Have you heard it before? Give, oh, you haven't heard it. Where did you go to school? <laughs> hey, give the devil his due. Now, let me let me show his due, his right. He has a right to sow thoughts into your mind. That is his right. You can't take that one away from him. And anything that can enter your mind can enter your dreams. Anything that can have access to your mind can have access to your dreams. Because the mind is the battlefield. So, he has instant and immediate access to our minds. But for him to enter your heart, you must open the door for him. Your mind, he has access to your mind. He can enter your mind. And, uh, Sometimes you can enter your heart, but let me show you how you can enter your heart. You have to open the door. You will first of all come and sow the thoughts in your mind. Then, if you don't do anything about it, you can easily give him the right to enter your heart. To influence your decision. See, it's your heart that decides. It's your heart that acts. It's your heart that determines what you do. The heart has thoughts and intents. So he comes with thoughts. And when it is not checked, then he can enter your heart. John 13 verse 2. John 13 verse 2. Um, then we'll read verse 27. John 13 2. And then we'll read verse 27. It says that, And supper being ended, the devil having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son to betray him. The devil, having already put it into his heart, he dropped the thing into his heart. He first of all dropped the thought into his heart, but then Judas allowed that thought to settle down in his heart because he decided to do it. So when he decided to do it, then means that the thought had reached the heart. Then verse 27, verse 27 said that um, 
Now, after the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Then Jesus said to him, What you do, do quickly. He said, after the piece of bread, Satan entered Judas. Now, Satan had already put it in his heart. Then later on, he entered him. Now, come to Acts chapter 5, verse 3, 3 to 4. Acts 5, verse 3. I just want you to know his right so that you will know uh, the extent to which he can go. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was so, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. So you see Satan also filling Ananias' heart. Because he conceived the thought in his heart. He conceived the thought in his heart. Then Satan filled his heart. So a believer's heart can be assessed by the devil. But he first of all drove the thoughts in your, in your, in your mind. Then because from your mind to your heart, there's a door. You know, from your mind. You see, I said that uh, if you use the tabernacle, uh, I'm just going back, but don't worry. If you use the tabernacle illustration I gave, the, the, the gate of the tabernacle is the five senses, right? The outer court is your body. The door is the mind that is leading to the holy place, your soul. Then the veil is your heart leading to the holy of holies, your spirit. You know, man, man is a temple of God, right? We are the tabernacle. And that's, that's how we have been arranged. That's how our, our parts have been arranged. So, you can, you can open the heart for Satan to enter. In the same way, he can come into your dreams to sow thoughts. Dreams are just pictures, thoughts. They are thoughts that you, that you have while you are asleep. God can sow thoughts into your, your mind while you are asleep. Satan too can sow thoughts into your mind while you are asleep. And we need to know the difference. Now, demons cannot possess a believer. Get that one straight. A believer cannot be possessed. Because in your spirit, your spirit is a single room. And it can be taken by one, one person at a time. When you become born again, the Holy Spirit fills your spirit. As a matter of fact, the Holy Spirit mingles with your spirit. First Corinthians 6, 17 says, He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit, not two. One spirit with him. So, when you are born again, your spirit has already been occupied. And you cannot be possessed by a demonic spirit. By your mind and your heart, you can, if you don't consciously, you know, prevent or protect your heart and your mind, you can put them at the disposal of the enemy. Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. Protect it. So, they have access to your heart if you give them access. Now, the devil has a, has a right to be around. I'm talking about his right now. Okay. He has a right to be around you till you resist him. It's not automatic. You see, listen. It's not automatic. The devil can be hovering around you if you have not taken you have not taken a stand against him to resist him. And I'm going to prove to you from the Bible. You, you know when Satan left Jesus, Matthew 4 10 to 11. Jesus was anointed. He had prayed and fasted. He was holy. He had prayed and fasted 40 days. Without water, I mean without food, 40 days. You know, but the devil was still able to go to him in his visions or his dreams. This, this, this was a vision and a dream. It wasn't a physical thing. It was happening in his mind, either a vision or a dream. That the devil took him and, and placed him on top of the temple and said, cast yourself down. It wasn't physical. It wasn't physical. You know, uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was in the spirit realm. Now, it was after he had finished fasting and praying. And the devil kept on coming. And in fact, he kept on quoting scriptures. It is written. Then the devil also started quoting scriptures. He said, you say it is written. Okay, it's also written. Jesus Christ said, he said that it's, it's written. It's written that 
he will, he, will, he will give his angels charge concerning you and they will keep you in their hands lest you dash your foot against the stove. Then Jesus Christ said, it is also written. Now, so it was a back and forth thing till he got to a point and said, hey, get out. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan. Away with you, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him. And behold, angels came and ministered to him. The devil did not leave him when uh, he fasted and prayed. I, I get him. So it's not enough to be holy. You must learn to resist the devil. Yes. I'm, I'm also going to give another scripture. Come to James chapter 4, verse 7. James 4, verse 7. It's not enough to be holy. You must resist him intentionally. If you want him to leave, tell him to leave. Therefore, submit to God resist the devil and he will flee from you it's not enough to submit to god you can be submitted to god and the devil will still be hovering around but you need to resist him then he will flee because he has a right to be around that's why god told adam subdue when god gave adam his job description god said be fruitful multiply replenish uh, have dominion he said subdue that word subdue is a very harsh word it's, it's a harsh word it means to control harshly. To control harshly. Subdue the earth. Why? Because there was somebody who was waiting to subdue them if they did not subdue. So the, 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 the enemy has a right to be around for as long as you are daily darling, you are, you are not decisive, you are not issuing any command, you are not resisting him, you are not giving instruction. He can just be hovering around. He cannot touch you, but he can be hovering around till you say, hey, Get out. Then he will, he will get out. He is permitted to take advantage of you if you are ignorant. Second Corinthians 2.11 Satan can take advantage of you if you are ignorant. So, so I say that uh, Satan, the devil is not the believer's greatest problem. No. The greatest problem is ignorance. So my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Not because of the devil, lack of knowledge. So, having, having shown you the rules of engagement, his, these are his rights. These are all his rights. These are his rights. The right to your mind. The right to be around until he's resisted. And what else? The right to take advantage of your ignorance. So, the only way to stop him is to know. Know how to counteract what he does. That's all. It's not a power encounter. It's a truth revelation encounter. Our encounter with the devil is not a power encounter. The power encounter took place on the cross. For us, it is by knowing what has happened and then enforcing it. That's why we cast out demons. There was no casting out of devils in the Old Testament. In fact, it was Jesus who started doing it. You know, just to let us know how we live in the kingdom. You see, in the Old Testament, you couldn't have cast out demons because at that time, the devil was a strong man. He was in charge by reason of what Adam delivered to him. But when Christ came and Christ delivered us from his power and Christ destroyed him, now we can cast out the demons. But if you don't cast them out, you have a right to be around. You, you, have, you, must, you must be on the offensive. Cast them out. It's not enough to be on the defensive. That's why after giving us the defensive armor, he gave us an offensive armor. The sword, which is the word of God. Which is, which is the sword of your spirit. The rima, which is the word of God that the Holy Spirit has quickened. When you release it and you use that, that is how you, you drive him out of your circumstances. Amen. Now, why does he come to us in dreams? Why does he come? First of all, know that the, the thief, the enemy will never come except to do three things. John 10, 10. The devil doesn't waste his efforts. If, if there's nothing to steal, you will not see him. If there's nothing to kill, you will not see him. If there's nothing to destroy, you will not see him. He says, the thief does not come except to steal. He said, the thief, he, he doesn't come. He doesn't just come. Except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He was talking about the thief. 
and and the devil is also a thief he also comes to steal kill and destroy so the very first thing he attempts to steal is the word of god in your heart so he has access to your heart he can steal the word from your heart if that word has not developed root as a matter of fact if you don't get you don't you don't progress to the level of understanding the devil has a right to steal the word from your heart. There are many people who receive words from God and Satan came to steal those words from their Words of prophecy, he came to steal them from their hearts. The word of the kingdom, he came to steal them, steal the word from their hearts. He has that access. In Matthew 13 verse 18 to 19, Jesus Christ was talking about the parable of the sower. That parable that he said, if you don't understand, you can't understand any other parable because it's the basic principle of the kingdom. It operates on the principle of the seed. Both the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God, they operate basically on the principle of the seed. So if you don't understand this parable, you can't understand any other parable. He said, therefore, hear the parable of the sewer. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. So the wicked one comes to snatch the word that was sown. If, the, if, you, have, if you don't understand the word, it is understanding that settles the word in your life. The word cannot become flesh till understanding takes place. So when he comes, he sees the raw word, just a raw word in your, in your heart. Some you have maybe you have heard this word. The word is in your in your mind, just your mind. Just you have not made any commitment to engage the word, to understand the word, to continue in the word, and the word is there, not growing. The enemy can come and steal that word. That's why even when God gives you a prophetic word, you don't just receive it and shove it. You must receive it. You must pray about it. You must pray for wisdom. You must seek to understand the prophetic word. You must know how far you are, how, how, how far the progress you have made toward that word at every point in time. You don't just leave the word like that. Just put it down and forget about it. No. It's a word. God processes the word. When God said the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent, God did not just leave the word like that. He went on to process the word from Genesis through to Exodus, Numbers, through the Old Testament till the word was matured and then the angel brought the word to Mary and said, and Mary said, behold, I'm the Lord's handmaiden. Then she took seed. That seed she took was the seed of Genesis 3.15. But it wasn't in the raw state. It had been processed. That's why so that God can give you a word upon word upon word. It is just processing the word he has given you. So sometimes you despise prophecy. You say, oh, I've heard this before. Oh, I've heard it. Oh, this one, is, I, I, I've heard it. Oh, I'm not, no more. I've heard it. You don't understand. You don't understand. God uses his word to process his word. That's what he does. Yes. When, when the word got to Mary, it wasn't the seed of the woman anymore. It had passed that stage. It had gotten into the place where, you know, it moved from being the seed of the woman. Then it went to the seed of Abraham. Then it went to the seed of Isaac. It was God still shaping the word. He told Isaac, it, through your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Then he told Jacob, this land I've given you and your seed. Then Jacob said, out of Judah will come the one who is the lawgiver and the scepter will not depart from Judah. It was a prayer of intercession for Judah because Judah nearly lost the scepter when he committed incest with Otama. And Otama took his scepter. So Jacob was prophesying and at the same time interceding for Judah that let not the scepter leave and depart from Judah. Then later on, God said, now, it's going to come from the house of David from Judah. So, you see that the thing was getting narrower and narrower. Then he said, oh, not just the house of David, but a virgin shall conceive. So, when he got to Mary, he had been processed. So, don't just leave the word like that. The, any word you don't, you don't pursue to understand, you will lose it. It cannot become flesh. 
it is obvious that the devil knows the workings of the kingdom than many believers. The devil knows because the devil knows the power of a seed. We don't know the power of a seed. Because the kingdom of preach on the principle of the seed. If I, if you see, I, I'm going to talk about the, the structure of the kingdom in the, uh, the kingdom power conference. I'll talk about the, the structure and the infrastructure of the kingdom. Then you understand that the kingdom always starts as a seed, as, as grand and as complex as the kingdom of God is. Once it comes down to this earth, it begins like a seed, tiny seed, easily despised. Okay, so the devil um, he knows and understands that. He understands that principle. That's why, that's why he, he always targets the seed before it springs up. He can persuade you to leave a place that you can receive light. Do you know why? Because his first fight is against the word of God. Satan will never be comfortable when you are receiving revelation knowledge. If he's able to steal the word, he can steal your destiny. Because he, when he steals, he can kill. He can destroy. Because it's the word that carries everything. It's the word. As far as God is concerned, when you pray to God, and God releases a word, as far as God is concerned, he has answered your prayer. Just the word. You can never get anything from God outside the platform of a word from him. Because God never does anything except he speaks. So when he, once he speaks, the unfolding of what he has spoken can take years. But it's just one word. He said, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So the devil comes to steal the word. That's why he comes to us even in dreams, to steal there's nothing that will let Satan come to you if there's nothing to be stolen. He will come to steal. The second reason why he comes to our dreams um, is to seek your permission. He comes to seek your permission. That's why he comes to your dreams. Can you imagine that? Hello? If the devil had power over you, why would he show you something before he carries it out? If he had power over you, why doesn't he just go ahead and implement his decisions on your life? Why must he show them to you in a dream? Because he needs your permission. That's all. He cannot touch you without your permission. He needs your permission. So he comes to you in a dream. Some dreams that cover the devil, they are permission-seeking dreams. I've told you before that it's just like receiving a DHL package or EMS package or whatever, whatever package you can either reject or, or accept. And you, you, are, you must sign for. When you sign for, then you have, you have accepted the goods. So, he comes to seek your permission. Now, the devil is an expert in getting you to give him your weapons or using your weapons on yourself. He's an expert when it comes to that. That is what he has been doing to the, to the church. Because if Jesus Christ said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth, where is Satan's authority? He has none. So why is he able to affect the church? Because he's an expert in deceiving you to give him your weapons or using your own weapons against yourself. For instance, some people can open their mouth and just say anything about themselves about their destiny, about themselves, you know, and, and your word is your bond. Now, if the devil is able to get you to open your mouth to say something, because of the authority you carry, what you say will stand in the spirit. And it will open a door for him to have access to your life. What you say, because you are a man and a woman under authority. Even angels cannot stop you from saying what you want to say. The angels, they respect you as a prince of, of, of God. 
they are so happy following you around. And if the prince says, I need sickness, they cannot say, no, you, 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 you prince, you, you, you can't see. No, you, you have requested for sickness to come. I thought you opened the door. So, he knows he cannot touch you without your permission. So, he comes to you to seek your endorsement. And fear has a way of giving the devil access. Fear. Because fear simply means believing in the devil's ability to, to hurt you. That's fear. Faith is believing in God's ability. Fear is believing in Satan's ability to harm you as a believer. Once you believe he can do it, you empower him. So sometimes he will come to you with a dream and he will paint such a gory picture, such a, such a, such a bleak picture, such, such a bad picture. Then you wake up from the dream and you are afraid. And instead of dealing with the dream and rebuking him, then you start confessing what you saw in the dream. And you start sowing that seed. Opening the door for him to come. You give him access. Then the third reason why he comes is to sow a seed. As I said, the devil understands the principle of the kingdom. It's a seed sowing thing. The, the kingdom of God always begins with a seed. Salvation begins with a seed. You have been born again not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. First Peter 123. Anointing begins with a seed. Prosperity begins with a seed. Healing begins with a seed. Everything, the seed is the word of God. And in the beginning was the word means at the foundation of the word. Everything begins with the word, the seed. That's the principle that the kingdom will preach. In the same way, Satan too oppressed by that same principle. He will come and sow a seed. In Matthew 13, 25, he said, But while men slept, an enemy came and sowed tears. And uh, went his way. Now, why did he go his way? He, he didn't stand there to observe whether, I mean, I mean, he just sowed the tears and went his way. He believed so much in the power of seed that he can sow a seed 30 years before manifestation, he can just sow the seed. So, when God shows you when the seed was planted, sometimes you'll be amazed that a seed can be planted in... Let's, let, let me tell you something. Even, even when it comes to the operations of which, uh, demons and all that, they, they can plant a seed in a person. As soon as the person is born, the seed is planted. There's a time the seed will germinate. Sometimes when people are in the womb, they go there to plant. When they are not protected, they go there to plant certain things. Then when they are born, those things are there. As they grow, it will come to a point where the thing will manifest. I was praying for somebody who at that time was 19 years old. And uh, she, she has started manifesting witchcraft and all that. So I asked her, I said, when was the first time you encountered the spirit? She said, when I was eight. I said that, so how did you encounter? He said, my grandmother gave me a uh, mashed a toy, you know a toy. I don't know a toy's name in English. You know, I don't know. Mashed ripe plantain. And then she gave me uh, egg then she put it in the egg, and when I when I ate it, when I slept, then she came to me at night and called me, and she was taking me to meetings. I didn't understand, you know. So the seed was someone she was she was eight eight years, and now she's she she was nineteen, and that's when the thing has started manifesting. Sometimes you you don't understand why people can sometimes all of a sudden come and say I'm gay. I'm a lesbian. You don't understand. Some of them, it was shown to them while they were in the womb. That's why they would, you, you, you will never convince them to tell them that they, are, they, are, they were not born that way. They will say, no, I was born that way. But they were not born that way. 
It was a manipulation of the devil while they were in the womb. <laughs> we don't believe it. Eh? <laughs> yeah, it's true. I've seen some before. I've seen somebody who, who was telling me that she's male. So, and she actually showed me some reports. You know, she had reports to back her, her claims that when they conducted a report, the testosterone in her, in her system was higher. All the male hormones were top, 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 top. So I said, you know what happened to you? Your physical body showed that you were a woman. But manipulation took place when you were in the womb. That's why it's like that. The devil can do that. He can swear seed. That's why when, when people, when, 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 when uh, you are pregnant, let's say that uh, when, when there's no protection, he's a seed sower. In the same way, he can come and sow things in your, in your dreams. The fourth reason he will come is to attack you. He still attacks believers, even though, even though you have a right, <laughs> you, you have a right to put him in check. He can still launch an attack. I will explain to you the circumstances. He can, he can hinder you in certain ways. Romans 1 13, Paul was hindered. Romans 15, verse 22, he was hindered. Then 1 Thessalonians 2 18, he said, Satan hindered me. Satan hindered Paul. If you succumb to him, he can even afflict you if you allow him. Yes, if you allow him. Because I've said that he's not, he's not dead. He's not dead. He will try. He will, I mean, he will attempt. He will try. He will attempt to attack if you allow him. Even the church, the devil attacks the church. He can attack the church through persecution, through affliction. If we don't pray. In Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 5. You see how Herod killed James with a sword. He killed James with a sword. Then he proceeded to take Peter also. It was, you see, it, 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 was, it was the devil who was behind all those things. He killed James. God was there. The rules of engagement. You know, if the church does not act, God cannot. He has already given all authority to the church on this earth. So on this earth is the church that must check the devil, not God. When we call on God to come and stop the devil, it is unscriptural. We don't call on God to stop the devil. We fellowship with God. We, we, we build our relationship with God. We submit to him and we resist the devil. He doesn't resist the devil. So you will you, 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 be surprised. The devil can be doing many things. Many things. And God is watching. And the church is expecting God to do something. Meanwhile, God is expecting the church to do something. If, if, if believers are KNUST, you don't get up and you don't start praying and start checking and, and controlling and, 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 and resisting that that, that, that spirit that is trying to invade the campuses, there's, God will do nothing. It is the church that must come together. The church must be empowered. The church must come together and raise prayer and stop that thing and say that in the name of Jesus, we will not allow you to prevail. We curse the root. This thing was sown maybe some time ago. But we cannot put it as a church. If you sit down there, and you know that's why, that's why is the the church must start thinking kingdom thinking, not religious thinking. Not until we start thinking kingdom, we will suffer many defeats, and the name of God will suffer many defeats, and we will say that where is God or why has God let us down? But it is it will not be God who has let us down; it will be we. Who have let him down. When the church prayed, then heaven despite an angel to release Peter. Herod would have killed Peter in addition to James. If the church had not prayed, God was still watching. Okay, going, going, gone. James is gone. Then Peter going, going. Then the church became wise. I said, Hey, no, we must pray. When they prayed, Peter was released. 
Then, with, with a short while, an angel struck Herod. And Herod died. When he died, the Bible says, but the word of God multiplied. The church did not pray to kill him, but they resisted the move of the devil. And Herod himself, his own pride, his own pride provoked one of the watchers and they struck him like they struck Nebuchadnezzar. That's why the Bible says we should offer intercession. First Timothy 2, 1 to 3. He said we should pray for those in authority because the devil can use them. We should pray. Otherwise, they can come out with laws that will make Christianity almost impossible. If, if we, we don't pray, if we ignore and we don't pray, we have left everything. Satan is capturing every session of society. Everything. Now, now the church has shied away from many things. That's why the devil has also gone ahead to occupy certain territories. Now, when we want to enter, then it becomes a fight. It's not Satan. You see, Satan is not the one who should be in charge of policies and policy making in a country. The church should influence and the church should be able to be in charge so that we can influence the right policies. Yes. Okay. So, types of demonic dreams. I'm going to give you the types now. All that I said, I just said them to let you know why Satan comes to you in a dream. We have spiritual attack dreams. Spiritual attack dreams. Hmm. Dreams of fights, wrestling, hindrance. You know, you can, the devil can actually come to you to, to fight you, to hinder you. But he must not succeed. He has a right to come. But he must not succeed. If he succeeds, then it means that you have work to do. It means you, you don't know or there's a certain kind of revelation that you lack. When does he come to attack in a dream? When? It, it could be as a result of season. There are seasons when a devil can launch attacks. There are seasons when what God is doing in your life will attract attacks. And some of those attacks, you can see them in your dreams. You see, anytime, anytime God finishes a certain work in your life, the, the enemy will come and test it. You say, I will build my church. When I finish building my church, the gates of hell will try, but they will not, they will not prevail. They will not prevail because they will try. They will not prevail means they are pushing, they will not succeed. When he finishes, as, as soon as David was anointed, 2 Samuel 5, 17, when David was anointed, the Philistines came to fight him. They could sense the anointing in the spirit. Say, let's test it. Now, when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David. And David heard of it and went down to the stronghold. They came searching for him. I mean, looking to, seeking to attack him. Because they saw the anointing. But he defeated them. That is, that is the most important thing. He defeated them. So, sometimes you have spiritual attacks in dream. Then also sometimes it's because you enter new territories. When you enter new territories, they can come and launch an attack. And you must defeat them. You must, they should not defeat you. You must <laughs> defeat them. But it is called spiritual attack dream. When we started this church in 2016, when we were at Asim, Asim School, one day I had a dream, and in the dream, I saw people coming, and these were traditional authorities. And they came challenging me that, who gave you the permission, or where is your permit? Then I said that the government allows for freedom of worship. He said, no, we are talking about traditional permits. 
a traditional permit. We had just started like, we were just into, a, I think, one month or two. Then they came. Anytime you enter new territories, they will come and test. They will test how far they can go. They, want to, they always want to know their boundaries. How far can I go with this person? You know, they're like children. They always test you how far they can go with your discipline. You know, so they always test, stretch you a bit and see if this one will attract a, a beating or, or just, just a warning or just a scolding. They, they know all the, the punishment that you can mete out to them. Then demons too sometimes try to check their limits, how far they can go. So they will attempt to touch something. Then as they attempt to touch, when you say, hey, then they will know that, no, here, I can't go. In, in fact, sometimes they even instruct their, their, um, those who are under them that if you don't know and you pa- pass by this place and anything happens to you, me, it's, not, it's not my concern. <laughs> so, this person, leave him alone because we, we, we know how far we can go with him. That's why you have to be a Christian who takes charge. You don't have to be a Christian who watches things like that. When things are happy, you don't understand. Take charge. Speak. Let them know that you, you define how, how, how far they can come. Are you getting me? So when you go to new territories, they'll come. Like I've always been telling you several times that we've been to places where I've had encounters with these people. You know, several times. Sometimes I'll go to a new place and I'll see maybe somebody, the one who is in charge or something, you know. And they always come, but they, 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 they never defeat. It's just like they come to see for you to know. When you are a gatekeeper, they can launch an attack to challenge your authority. To see if you know the authority you have. Yes. And those, are, those attacks, they, they can come in dreams. Some years ago, we were there was somebody in our house and uh, I had been having dreams, you know, um, of the person trying to manipulate my children to cause them, for a car to knock them, for a car to knock them down, many things. Then I would deal with the dreams and all that and forget about it. Then one day, it was a Monday morning. One day I had a dream. In a dream, this person I'm talking about, finally, um, after sending all those things and not being able to have her way, she decided to come physically, I mean, personally in a dream. And I really gave her beatings. <laughs> I mean, I really gave her beatings in a dream. It was a Monday morning. I left for a cry. I didn't tell my wife that I had a dream. So I left because I didn't want her to be afraid. Because this person who is with us, you are leaving us, and this person you have fought with the person in the dream. So the Monday I left, the person left with the excuse that she was going to attend to a relative or some, somewhere. She didn't come on the Monday. On the Tuesday, she didn't come. And my wife told me, and I told her that she can't come back. She can't come because the way the, the fight was. <laughs> And, so, and you know, she couldn't come. And then when she was coming, she came with her relatives. She was so furious. I won't stay here again. They asked her every question. Why? What has happened? Nothing. I just, I, I just want to leave. And then she left. In that same, in that same day, after I had beaten her, she opened, she opened the door for Anne Roberts to come. They, they came. I was sitting on the dining table. They pointed a gun. They shot five. Pa, 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 five. I didn't feel anything. Yeah. I, they, they shot. I mean, the, you, they sh- the guy was really firing, but nothing was entering. And I was just sitting down watching them like that, and they ran away. That's when she realized that even by bringing reinforcement, it couldn't work. So she had to go. So when you're authority figure, I remember one, one dream. I was holding two children, my daughter, my last one, and the other one was, was my niece. They were all born in the same year. And I was holding the two of them in a basket. And I saw a very big raven, black, 
speak raven. Then the raven was coming at me. And in the dream, I knew that she wanted, he wanted to pick the eyes of the children. So when, as she was coming, I pulled the baskets down and I took hold of her, her, the, the raven and I broke the beak. Yes, the spiritual world, I broke the beak. The following day, another person started crying. She cried and cried and cried and cried. That one happened here because the dream happened here. She cried and cried and cried and they asked her, she didn't say anything that she left. Yes, I broke the beak. <laughs> yes, so that was a spiritual attack dream. Spiritual attack dream. Now, when they see that you have been delivered from their power, they can also come and test. That's why when people go through deliverance, they must be fortified with the word. And we must instruct them how to stand their ground, how to stand on their ground with the word. Because sometimes they can go and attack them. There was one time I, 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 <laughs> I was praying for somebody and then I went with him to where he was keeping his, um, his idols. I, it was behind a wall and there's a shed then he was he had all these monuments you know you know and then he would say oh this one this this spirit appeared to me and asked me to uh, design this monument for it and he had many of them he knew then said that if you pour blood on this then you can call on this spirit and that that is true because in the bible that's how they call upon god in the old testament they will build altars and then they will call upon the God who appeared to them for them to build the altar. So, then I said, he had buried all because we have been praying with him and all that. So, he had buried all. And I said, no, you have to approve them. You have to put fire to them. So, when we put fire to the thing, I don't know what happened to him, but he was being strangled. He was being strangled and he was helping me to, I mean, telling me to help him because he's, somebody is squeezing his neck. So I, I just laid hands on him and I prayed. And I told them that you have no power over him because of his own volition, he has accepted Christ Jesus. And now he's for, he's for Christ. Then there was some manifestation and all that. And he was, so when occultic people are delivered, they can come again to attack them. Sometimes spiritual, <laughs> there was somebody I prayed for, uh, spiritual marriage. Then, then the, the spirit came again at night and then the spirit said, you say you don't want me again? <laughs> you, know, you know the plans I have for you? I'm going to give you this, 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 that. Now, before then, before then, he would just come and take her by force, sleep with her. But now, he knows something has happened. Now he's coming, even though it's an attack, but he's now coming gently, trying to persuade her, come back to me. I still love you. Then when, when the, the woman said no, he said, you know what? You can't go anywhere. You are still mine. Do you know how? Do you know the price I paid? Do you know this? Do you know? So when she told me, I told her, don't mind him. Just don't mind him. You know, don't, don't just forget it. She, he can't do anything. Because at first he used to come and force you. But now, why did he, why couldn't he force you? Because now he knows that you have received deliverance from his power. How to deal with dreams of spiritual attack? Affirmation of identity. You always have to remind the devil you know who you are. When you face spiritual attacks, say, in the name of Jesus, devil, you are a liar. Listen, I am seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers. You cannot touch me. You can't touch me. I have authority over this people, this person, and I stand at the gate 
and I deny you permission. I mean, you must let the devil know your identity. When Paul was about to be flogged, he said, is it lawful to beat a Roman citizen uncondemned? When they heard that he was a Roman, the Bible said they withdrew. They were afraid. Then the centurion said, I bought this citizenship with a lot of money. Then Paul said, I was born free. Then he said, those who are about to examine Paul, they withdrew. They would have beaten him if he had not opened his mouth to declare his citizenship. That I am Roman. You can't touch me. I'm Roman. One day, my grandmother told me something. He, she said that anytime you go out and then you meet an executioner uh, or brafo anywhere, I've forgotten the thing that she, she said. She said, you must tell them that I'm, I'm a royal and what, 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 what. And if you say that to them, they will know that what you are saying is true. They won't touch you. But they don't use royals for sacrifice. They use uh, people who are not, even strangers, they use them for sacrifice, but not royals. So if you say, I'm a royal, the executioner will not touch you. Like when one Thursday they said everybody should sleep at six. Because they went to bury the queen mother. And the executioners, their pictures and all that were on social media. Now, if let's assuming they, they, they still hold on to that tradition, and let's say they met you at night and you were able to prove that you were royal. They cannot touch you. They can't. If they touch you, they will have to go through a lot of cares. I mean, because they know that a musu. Are you getting me? So you must let the devil know that, look, I'm a royal. You can't touch me. I'm a royal. I, I, I can't be touched. Please. I'm a royal. Affirmation of your victory in Christ. Okay affirmation of your status and authority. Let the devil know that you know. You know that you, Christ has defeated him. Let him know that you know. Otherwise, he can still be coming. So, spiritual attacks. So, spiritual attack dreams, you are involved. They, it's an attack. They come to test you, to attack you, but then you prevail over them. And this one is not spiritual warfare dream. Like I, I shared that, 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 that one in, uh, when I was talking about dreams from God, where that one, you can see warfare. You know, but this one is an attack. It's coming to attack you. And you must know how to deal with it. Number two, second type of dream, projections, dreams. Now, these are dreams where they project their intentions. This is what I call permission-seeking dreams. Because he, he, they need your permission to carry it out. And so you must deny them permission. These dreams, you will see, for instance, when you see yourself, for instance, involved in an accident, in a dream, it's not God's, it's not God, God's dream. It is Satan telling you, this is what I've planned concerning your life. It's a projection. And they the project it so that you'll be afraid. And so that you'll give them the permission to carry it out. If somebody has a dream and you had, you had died through accident, it could be God showing the person. That would be an intercession dream. You see the difference? God will not show you a dream where you yourself you are dead. Or a dream where you are involved in an accident and it's all the blood there's the bloody scene and where your, your, your leg is, is trapped in a car. No, no, those dreams are not from God. They are from the devil. They are projection dreams. He, he, he's trying to let you know what he has planned. But he can't carry out his plans without your permission. So he must show them to you in a dream. It's like a mosquito who wants to bite you. He, the, the, the law of the, the, the rule of engagement with mosquitoes is that they should not go ahead to bite you. They must first make noise in your ears. <laughs> so why, why don't they just bite you? Why must they come and make noise in your ears? They want your permission to bite you. These dreams from the devil, they are permission-seeking dreams. You have a dream and then you went to the hospital. Then 
you have been hospitalized or you are dead or you have been injured accident bloody scene it's not god's dream it's satan's dream seeking your permission it's what he has planned and he's projecting it so you either reject or permit that's all and you should you should you should reject it you should deny him the permission the aim of the projection dreams is to is to invoke fear and fear is having faith in the devil's ability so when you when you put faith in satan's ability you have given him your weapon because the devil does not have any weapons against you the only weapon he has against a believer is deception he has no authority he has power but no authority to use the power against the believer and so he must come to convince you and deceive you to use your weapons against yourself and when he's able to instill fear in you what he's doing is that he is you are surrendering your weapon because you have placed faith in him and deities spirits they they are they are engaged when you place faith in them that's how you engage a spirit by placing faith in them when you place faith in god you engage god when you place faith in the devil which is fear you engage him so permission seeking dreams don't ever don't ever be afraid no dream is final no ever no 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 dream is final and i had a dream and and this person the, and, and 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 somebody took me and the person you know and i was in the car and i had an accident and i, I was dead and i was in the mortuary and i was in the cemetery and I, all those dreams are not from god they are satan's projection god will not give you a dream where you find yourself in a mortuary or where you find yourself dead or where you find yourself trapped in an accident that's not god's dream god can show it to somebody that you that you you had an accident that would be an intercession dream are you getting me but when you have it about yourself it's not god it's the devil trying to instill fear seeking your permission and you have a you have a right to say no this one i i, I reject it i i won't allow you no no permission denied okay so how to deal with permission or projection dreams reject it renounce the dream rebuke it then declare scriptures concerning god's protection god's providence and all all those things see that's why i say that the kingdom operates on the basic principle of the seed and the seed is the word everything you want to see in the kingdom you have to speak it it is in the word you have to you have to release the word concerning it and speak it so when the devil shows you that picture what picture are you showing him to counteract his picture so a picture of you trapped under a car with blood oozing all that what are you also telling the devil you tell the devil that look, look i reject this dream i renounce this dream not even one of my bones will be broken so he will give his angels charge concerning me therefore i reject this dream i reject your projections i rebuke you you must learn to talk you must learn to speak don't just have dreams and be afraid and be crying no no dream is final just as no prophecy is final no dream is final somebody somebody will say that oh a prophet said he saw that i i, I was dead and he saw that i have five days to leave i have ten it's just like a dream it's not final some people think that once a prophet has said that you are going to die it means that you must die no even some some of some of them too they are they are they are like this they project what they what they are thinking and they project what they've planned people can get up and see you know in the year 2000 and uh, what year was that i think 2018 or 2019 there was one prophet who prophesied that this year i mean that year from january to i think july there was going to be a lot of death and you know i listened to it personally he said that there's going to be death and people are going to die and uh, uh it's going to be a rainstorm people are going to hit their cars against trees and so many things the day 
he said it was, I think it was, I, I saw it on the 1st of January. Then the day before we came for PowerPoint, that must have been around the 5th, 6th, 7th, you know. I had a dream. In the dream, I met this prophet, this so-called prophet. Then he said, <clears throat> Afi, you be queen of Papa, He was holding uh, some, something, a knife or a device. And then he said, Afi, you be queen of Papa, When we think that this year, we are going to kill people like something. So when I came for the conference, at the PowerPoint conference, I shared, those who were there, I shared the dream. And I said, let's arrest the words of this prophet. This false prophet. Let's arrest his words. And let's negate them by divine authority because it's a projection. And it's either we permit, if you hear it, you must either reject or permit it. So I led a prayer and we rejected those words. Because having heard it, if you say, oh, it is now, now somebody will say that oh, it was God who showed him. God could have shown him that the devil has planned this. That would have been for intercession. See, anytime, anytime those things are released and they create fear, is the devil's the devil's agenda. You see, so when he said that, then in the dream he told me that he was going to be killing people that year. That was when I realized that not all the so-called prophecies into the year are from God. There are some that are projections by the devil and spiritual people must pick them up and negate them. Even those from God, we pray against them because maybe God is showing us that maybe times are going to be hard or things are going to happen or Satan is planning this. So we pray against it. We stop the devil. And there are, one, there are some that th- those prophets, they will come and say it. That is why, that is why when they say it, it still happens. Do you know why? Because, because it's a projection. It's not God who is showing you. So if you don't counteract it, it will stay. So that's how we deal with projection dreams. The third one, sowing dreams. Sowing dreams. These are dreams in which the devil actually plants something in you or carries out an operation which is said to manifest physically. You know, there are some dreams where the enemy will, pro- will maybe project. Then you wake up, if let's say it was a gunshot on your right shoulder, you actually wake up with a pain on the right shoulder. Those dreams are from Satan, not God. It is a, it, And those dreams, when they happen like that, you must not joke with them because it means something has actually been sown. It's not a projection dream. This one, something has been sown, really. And you must know how to uproot it. Are you getting me? There are many kinds of demonic dreams where people, I know somebody who had a dream and she was shot in the arm. And within some, some, some weeks, some days or weeks, she was dead. And, and, some, and she complained to many people. And then she was dead. So, it can happen. You see, that, because the reason is that this time they have they have sown it, <coughs> and it shouldn't happen that they will come and sow. But if it happens, you always have the right to uproot it there and then. You can sow sickness. Do you know why they keep burning <coughs> after you have woken up? Because they are fiery that. The enemy has fiery that. Arrows on fire. When he releases those things, it's you in the spirit. Even when you wake up, it's still burning. You can still feel the sensation. Are you getting me? Hmm. They can sow sicknesses. They can sow premature death. Yes, they can sow spirits. Spirit, lust can be sown. Drunkenness can be sown. I've prayed for people with all these things. That's why I'm saying that. Dreams that resulted into these things. You see. So, they can be sown. Dreams like being injected. Being injected with something. 
in a dream. It's a seed that has been sown actually. You must uproot it. Otherwise, it will manifest. It is time, time related. You know, people can, you know, I had a dream one day. I went to a church and uh, there was this, this prophet that uh, God was showing me that he was a false prophet. Okay, so when I went to the church, I went to his room. I've been to the church before. I went to his room where his office is. Then I saw some uh, liquids, you know, in syringe. Syringe. And then one was a sugar solution. One was a salt solution. And one had been, they used the bile of an animal to produce it. Then I said, what are these? Then he said, when they come for consultation, I inject them. I said, so how, what, what do you inject? They said, oh, this one is uh, diabetes. This one is uh, uh, hypertension. This one is um, this. This one is that. Then I said, oh, so that's what you do here. I said, that's what you do here. You know, then I woke up from the dream. God was showing me what he's actually doing. Now, so when you have a dream, somebody has injected you, you must know how to deal with it. Something has entered you, you must deal with it. That's why the believer, you see, the believer has a system of deliverance, deliverance system within you to get rid of toxic. And I will talk about deliverance system after this series. You know, I know we are dealing with seven systems, right? We've talked, we've talked about foundational systems, connecting systems, character system. Now we are dealing with informative system. They will move to deliverance system, then dominion system, then ministry system. Then we'll finish. <laughs> <laughs> Why? You don't like the word finish. I hear you. I, I, I receive it. We will not finish today. So injections. Bites. Bites. Those dreams where an animal beats you. Don't, don't, it's, I mean, it's an injection dream. It's a sowing dream. Sometimes you see the you feel the, the pain. Don't take it for granted. You must know how to get rid of toxic. Cuts. Cuts. Blood dreams. When you dream and blood is leaving your body, eh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sowing dream. Maybe there's a cut and blood was coming. Sowing dream. You are bleeding in in a uh, 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 I mean, excessively. It's a sowing dream. When you are slapped, <laughs> when you are shot with a gun, when you are stabbed, <laughs> when you are, all those things. You see, the context will let you know that this was a demonic dream. Because, for instance, when you are shot and you were shot in the chest, then you wake up with a pain in the chest. It's not just pain. There are many things which manifest as pain, but they have very, very strong underlying roots. So when somebody says, I was feeling pain, sometimes we go for crusade people with testimonies. I had pain when I was coming and praise the Lord, the pain is gone. Somebody say, oh, we are looking for cripples to work. They are saying pain. You don't know what was, what was causing the pain. Do you know that you can have some pain and they will, it will be caused by a kidney uh, malfunctioning? You can have some pain and the pain is actually caused by some dangerous disease. So, when you dream and you have been shot and there is pain, don't think that it's just pain. You must know that something has entered. You must deal with it. And thank God we can deal with it. That's why I said dreams for the devil are the easiest to deal with because the solution is so simple. Eating, eating, not all eating is from the devil. Are you getting me? Not all eating is from the devil. Uh, there are some dreams you see yourself eating. Number one, there are some dreams that are from your body. Maybe you were hungry or maybe 
a, some food that you were craving for, you didn't get, then you went to sleep. Like Peter was hungry while they were praying for him. He saw a large seat and then God said, Peter, rise, kill and eat. It was, it was, a, it was a trance. Sometimes too, it can even be eaten. You see, sometimes you can have dreams where, I've had a dream where a man of God have, has given me, asked me to choose fruits from a, a bag and eat. And I chose, it was avocado. I chose avocado. Not pear, not pear, avocado. I chose avocado and I ate it. And it was a, it was a good feeling. That one was a dream from God. You know. But you can have a dream where you have eaten something. Then you wake up. You see that you are full. Something has entered you. You see you start becoming lazy. Your prayer life starts going down. You start becoming carnal. Th- those dreams are sowing dreams. Demonic dreams. Yes. So when you eat wrong stuff, it, it will manifest. How do you handle sowing dreams? Jeremiah 1.10 And then Matthew 15.13 it will give us clues. Jeremiah 1 10. Ha. Huh. What is that? Jeremiah 1 10. And you look at the order. Look at the order he gave him. See, I have this day set you over nations and over kingdoms to root out, pull down, destroy, throw down, to build and to plant. Now the negatives are. are Tackled first. Root out first. Dealing with dealing with sowing dreams, you must not, you must first of all approach what has been sown. Then you plant the word. You must first approach. In the Bible, the 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 the, the, the evil is always approached first. It said, it said, at the time of the harvest, I will tell the reapers, gather the tares first. Then burn them before you gather the wheat. So you uproot what has been planted first before you plant what you want to plant. Matthew 15, 13, another scripture you can use. It says, every tree, every plant which my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. This thing was not planted by God. It was planted by the devil. Therefore, I uproot it. In the name of Jesus. I abolish it from my system. In the name of Jesus. I curse it. In the name of Jesus. So, you renounce that dream. To renounce means to publicly disconnect yourself from. Dissociate yourself from. To renounce. So, if you say, I renounce this dream. You are telling the devil that I disconnect myself from this dream. I'm not part of it. I'm not part of it. That's your own cup of tea. I'm not involved. Then command every seed sown to be uprooted. After you have commanded, listen, after you have commanded the seed to be uprooted, that's not all. Sometimes, as soon as the seed is sown, a process is initiated. So you must also halt every negative process that has, that has been initiated as a result of that dream. Yes, because sometimes as soon as you as soon as it takes place a process has been have initiated you must stop that process of death then after that then you can start planting when i say planting let's say that you had a dream and then um they injected you with something you woke up for the dream you know you have been injected you renounce the dream in the name of jesus i renounce this dream I reject it. I cancel it in Jesus' name. Anything that has entered me, any seed that has been sown, anything that has been released into my bloodstream, I curse it in the name of Jesus. I command it to be uprooted. I command it to be nullified. It is written, if I take any deadly thing, it shall not hurt me. Therefore, I nullify and I render ineffective the power of the seed that has been sown. After you have done that, that's not all. Any process of death, any process of defeat, failure, that has been initiated as a result of that dream, I stop that process right now. I reverse it in the name of Jesus. Then after that, you start planting. You start planting the word. 
make declarations in the name of Jesus. I will, I, I will live to the work of God. In Jesus' name, I am healthy. In the name of Jesus, his blood was shed for me. The blood was shed for me on Calvary. By reason of the blood, the blood, the body was broken for my healing. I am healthy. No sickness can take hold of my body. No, I mean, you start planting the scriptures you know about that condition. The word. So, sometimes, you can even decide to take communion. Using the blood as a point, the wine as a point of contact for the blood of Jesus. Because that thing was injected into you, so you, it, it will help your faith. You take communion so that you know that uh, the, blood, the power has also been injected into you. You can take water and pray. I mean, it will help your faith. The declaration is enough, but it will help your faith. You see, there's no reason why we must live defeated lives as, as believers. Under the mercy of the devil, he can come and plant a dream and then you wake up and then you are confused. Then things are going bad. See, the, the only reason is ignorance. And sometimes, sometimes it breaks my heart. I have spent time to write a book on how you can deal with some of these things. Some people, when I ask them, they've bought the book. They've not read the book. And can't worry me with, with complex dreams. Go and read the book. You see, you have not read the book. You haven't read the book. You have bought the book. You are not reading the book. And then you are still going through these things and you come and worry people. If you, if you won't read the book, the reason why I wrote the book was for you. Not for me. For you. It is what I know by grace and I've lived it that I'm writing. So, in the book, you will see, you will see after all that, you see declarations. When I ask people, have you used the book? <laughs> you know, I've bought it, but I have no hard time. I said, what, 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 what is, what, 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 what is that? I, 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 I don't understand. What is that? I, I, I've bought the medicine, but I've not taken it. How? <laughs> okay, you let's continue. Number four, manipulation dreams. Manipulation dreams are also very dangerous. If you don't deal with them. These dreams are like spiritual tear gas. They target your spiritual fervency. They, they, to quench your fire. They can release laziness. Lethargy. Inertia. You know inertia? <laughs> Where you, you can't move. Inertia. Can slow you down. When, you see, anything that will attack your prayer life, there are three things that you must guard them. Okay, four things. Guard them jealously. You know, guard them like, guard them with your life. Your secret place life. Guard it jealously. Your commitment to the fellowship and relationship with God. Guard it jealously. Your life of purity. Guard it jealously. Your relationship with other believers, guard it jealously, and your connection to authority, guard it jealously. If these things you guard them jealously, I'm telling you, the devil cannot have a way. By manipulation dreams. Now, you know what we call sleep paralysis, what we call moon tomb. I've not experienced moon tomb before. Never. I've, I've only heard people explain. I've never experienced it before. Yeah. So I don't know how it feels like. But, you know, it's like this. And the English is sleep paralysis. But there's one that is from the body. Last week I explained. Where, let's say, the state of your body while you are asleep. You can have a dream and, let's say, you are running. You are not able to run because your leg is bent. But there's another one that is demonic where evil presence comes to your room, tries to suppress you, and, and they put you in a state where you cannot move. And, 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 um, and uh, they said that you, unless somebody touches you before you come to your senses. That dream is not, it's, it's manipulating dream. It's from the devil, not from God. And I'm going to show you why it happens like that. 
They want to paralyze your spiritual movement. They want to manipulate your thinking by making you confused. You know, for some of these dreams, you may not remember the, the exact experience, but you may wake up from the dream feeling depressed. Nobody has done anything to you. You are just depressed. Something happened in, in your dream. Maybe you, you didn't see. It was manipulating dream. Manipulation dream. They tried to manipulate you. These are all fiery darts of the enemy. And like I said, there's no reason why we should allow the devil to make us depressed. I'm telling you the truth. I'm, I'm, I'm te- it's, not, it's not like I'm trying to trivialize what you are going through. I'm saying there's no reason to allow him to make you depressed. For you to be depressed. Just by waking up, you are sad. Nobody has said anything to you. You are sad. You are discouraged. You are depressed. Something happened while you were asleep. And you must deal with it. You must know that something, a fairy dart has been released. Some manipulation has taken place. That's why they will, they will immobilize you so that you wake up and you are confused. And sometimes you will see that your prayer life is going down. You see your zeal is going down. You see, your desire to pray, your desire to pray is going down. Your desire for the word of God is going down. You see, now you are you are embracing a lot of carnal things. When I say carnal, I'm talking about sensual things. You see, less it, what, when it happens like that, it is your spiritual fervency that is under attack. And you must do something about it because if you don't do anything about it, it's going to affect you. It's going to affect you. You see, when you are set in authority, there are certain things you can't afford to do. Anybody can do, but you, you can't do. You see, if God counts on you at your workplace, for instance, you know you are a gatekeeper at the workplace. Everybody can have their way. You cannot. Because when you compromise in one way or the other, there will be many casualties. Because they are, they are, God has entrusted that place to you, to your care. If you are a leader, then there is responsibility on you. If you are a father, responsibility on you. Because you are a gatekeeper. You were a gatekeeper. You see, when David committed adultery, look what happened to his household. The sword never departed. Tamar, you know, and Absalom, uh, he was killed. Absalom murdered Amnon. Then Absalom himself was killed. Rebellion. A whole lot of things. Just because an authority figure opened the, the gate. So when they place you on top of your department, as a departmental leader, it is authority. It is authority that you can use for good. You can you can protect all those who are under your care. You see, you see, uh, Paul said, "For there stood by me this night an angel of the Lord, whose I am and who I serve." And he said, "Fear not, Paul, for I've given you all the souls that are with you. I've given them to you." David told the guys, he said. He who seeks your life also seeks my life, but with me you are safe. That is that is the power of being a gatekeeper. And so some of these fiery darts, when they are thrown at you, you must quickly get up. See, sometimes you can't afford to live in discouragement for if you it will be costly if you live in discouragement and depression for far too long. Things may slip through. So sometimes you might just pull yourself together, just keep the secret place and allow God to work on you. It's like li- living in bitterness. By the time you realize, come to yourself, many things would have slipped through because you were not on, on your, of your own. So confusion, they will come first with confusion. Then confusion will lead to discouragement. 
When discouragement sets in, disorientation also comes in. You are disconnected from your environment. Your, I mean, your relationship with your environment is also affected. That's why people sometimes will stop coming to church. You don't know what happened to you. You woke up, you were, you were just, you woke up and <laughs> you woke up and you were just, you were just depressed. You were just discouraged. Then you started dwelling on your discouragement. And the devil came and was giving you slides, pictures. See, you are very miserable. Nobody likes you. Oh, they, are, they, don't, like, they don't like you. Nobody likes you. Look at that way when this person did that, that, that thing to you. And who, who you think, church folk, they don't like you. Your church, they don't like you. Even your pastor, when he's preaching, look at the way he, he talks to you. The other time he was talking about this, 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 this. Then you, then, so, then you start, then you see that you become disoriented. Your environment, you are disconnected. The devil will always try to disconnect you from good people. How? <laughs> How to deal with it? You must pray and fast. Ask God to refresh you. Renounce the dream. Ask God to refresh you. See, that's why resolving spiritual conflict is, is such a good thing. It's one of the deliverance systems of the believer. Not all, just one of them. You can get rid of toxic anytime, any day. If you know, because day in, day out, we, you, you can pick certain things. Even sometimes while praying for people, you pick their depression, you pick their despair, their discouragement. Sometimes, you know, this thing is not, it's not yours. You just pick it from some, some, somebody. And if you don't know how to deal with these things, what do you do? Now, somebody's depression has become your depression. <laughs> you don't know why you are discouraged. <laughs> you are picking somebody's discouragement. <laughs> so, set aside a day or two to fast and ask God to refill you. Pray more in tongues. Ask God to breathe on you and renew you. That is it. Okay, 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 okay. Let me let me run. Huh. The next one, let me run through because we have barely 15 minutes. Sexual dreams. Some are caused by physical factors, like I have already explained in uh, previous messages. But some are caused by demons. The ones that are caused by demons, they indicate demonic bondage. Familiar spirits, you know, uh, and some of them indicate spiritual marriage. Not all. Some indicate spiritual marriage. Some just indicate bondage. Some just indicate connection to uh, familiar spirits like back, background spirits, you know, uh, throne spirits, river spirits, and all those. That's one usually will lead you through a prayer of repentance to disconnect yourself from the, the idols in your family and all these things and to any soul tie that exists between me and the thrones and the deity and the gods and all that, you know, I disconnect myself. All those things are ways of dealing with some of these things. Okay, so the degree to which you are bound by the evil spirit the degree to which he can come and have sex with you. If it is a spiritual, a, a dream, sexual dream that is called by demons, for a demon to come and have sex with you, it means that you are bound. And you need, this case, you need external help. You need for another believer to stand with you and pray with you. Yes, if it happens, I'm going to show you the scenario, how you can know. Now, how to know is demonic frequency frequency of it it happens frequently sex in dreams is it happens frequently both for men and for women it means that it is caused by a demon timing if it happens at certain strategic times before birthdays before important events before exams and you see that it's regular there's a pattern you can clearly see a pattern 
you must you must start you must know that it is demons who are doing that it's not a physical uh, uh sex in dreams like because of the things you have been watching and 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 all that that one is there that one is there that one that one that one is that one is there it's not necessarily demonic but that one is the 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 things that you have suppressed in your heart that you are seeing in in dreams but this one i'm talking about when it is time to certain events in your life i pray for somebody in 2013 anytime she got pregnant anytime she will see that this person has come this invisible person a faceless person has come to sleep with her it will mean that a seed had taken taken place then it will lead to miscarriage she had had four miscarriages four because of that and when she conceives then somebody will come and sleep with her after that she will experience abdominal pains the next thing she will see blood then the pregnancy will go but she was free there was another person who also was having sexual dreams i didn't know but <clears throat> she was also looking for the fruit of the womb but then when i started interceding for her then i i saw myself entering their house then i i saw a cat and the cat was barking <laughs> <laughs> the cat was packing you know then somebody came the person who came was just like her just that she was a bit taller you know but just like her and the person said <clears throat> Obia made no this was when i started interceding for the person and i asked her whether she was experiencing such and then she said yes in dreams sometimes some of them you will see the reason why you know it's demonic is that the sex you are having in the dream is out of bound sex hello it's out of bound sex it's either fornication it's either ad- adultery incest homosexuality lesbianism bestiality these these things happen in dreams people and these are caused by demons and the effect so that you can have physical pain. Sometimes, right after that, you, you can have some edge that is strong, you know, to abuse your body. Then sometimes you have the edge to urinate is also there. Sometimes you can find semen. In fact, <laughs> somebody told me something I, I, I didn't believe till now. I don't know, but I believe it's possible. Before prayer, then she was telling me that one day she had a dream, then, then this being came and had sex with her in the dream. When she woke up, there was used condom on the bed. I didn't believe it. Yes, I didn't believe it. But I, 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 I think it's possible. I don't know. But that's because semen, there was used condom on the bed. That's what she said. And she said, there's nobody who, I mean, I'm here, no. And it's like, so how is it possible that use condom found its way to my bed? And that indicates the extent of bondage. Yes, it was an extreme case. And those dreams, they can easily cause sicknesses. See, that's why Sometimes, you know, one come meeting, August 2011, I called some people to pray for them. And I said that one person had a dream. In the dream, somebody came to sleep with her and she woke up bleeding. So, people came when I said, if you have had sex in dreams, then, in the course of the prayer, there was strong manifestation on this particular lady. So, after the prayer, after deliverance, I called her and I, I asked her. Then she said that 
sometimes she can get up after that encounter and then she can bleed and the bleeding can persist for three weeks three weeks now you can't tell me this is normal i mean physical problems can cause bleeding but not when it is caused after sex in dream that one is demonic then you must do something about it yes fibroids i'm not saying all fibroids are brought by that but i'm saying this one too can bring fibroid you know what a fibroid is fibroid is it's not a baby it's like something in the in the womb that is i think it's it obstructs either it obstructs pregnancy or i don't know i, I don't know much about it but it is it is just something you know if you see the pictures it's like a piece of flesh or something with blood something like that but it's there menstrual issues if you are a guy too it can it can it can it can affect it can lead to impotence i mean many things you do know why you see i i just want to i just want to tackle this thing extensively when i talk about deliverance systems so i'll i'll talk more about it because i've seen that many people they have these things and they just think that it's normal sometimes it can um make you uh promiscuous you know sometimes people because of that they start having sex indiscriminately yes you can if it's like having a dream and then being uh you are having sex with dogs 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 somebody was having sex with five dogs five dogs with animals spirits family members incest sometimes they are to reinforce negative family patterns that's why you have it with family members see their face these are family members so they are reinforcing negative patterns in the family through sex because it is an illegal covenant now, this one, if you experience these things, it's not enough to just get up and say, I renounce. No, you need to be prayed for. You need, you need higher authority to set you free from that. Because it's, a, it's, a, it's an indication of bondage. And not until you are set free, you can't have the grounds to stand and say, I renounce. Sometimes you can say that and you see that even after you see that, that's when the thing will just come and really, really do it do that thing with you i ministered to one woman who was married with two three children somebody brought her to me and i prayed for it then she said that it got to a point she was enjoying what she was having in the dream more than what she does with her husband and before she realized she was committing adultery with some religious leaders. Married, married, married. So after the deliverance, she got home and then she called me. She said that when she slept, water came out of her ears. Plenty, dirty water, plenty water came out of her ears. Some of them were slimy. I said that all the years that you have been receiving this protein into your system <laughs> faceless people people you don't see their face sometimes you see their faces sometimes you don't see their face they are, they are spirits sometimes you don't see their faces sometimes you see animals people who one person story an animal who was coming with an extra organ so when he gets tired and you use the one in his hand I went to a school at Offenso in 2012 to minister and there was this lady there who had undergone surgery and she said that while 
the thing was still fresh. She slept and then this being came and slept with her. When she woke up, she said the saw had opened. So you think it's not just spiritual. Something is it's really demonic. It's so that the, the, the spirit own, I mean, possesses or let me say, own, lords over the person. It's, it's bondage. And the operation that she had it was fibroid operation. Came again. Then the thing opened like that. That's why I'm saying that. These things, if you're a believer, have these things. It's deliverance you need. Know that you need external help. And you also need to grow in the word. So, okay, I'll, I'll touch on that later on. Witchcraft dreams. Then, should I, I just want to touch on all the types that we can finish. Witchcraft dreams. Dreams of participation in evil rituals. Or being a member of occultic meetings. It means the seed of witchcraft has been released. Like you don't know. See, witchcraft is not like the picture they paint. Witchcraft simply means control and manipulation. It's a work of the flesh. But sometimes when you have the attitude of witchcraft, it's like you desire to control people and you don't take care, you can encounter a spiritual force that is like that. That will actually help you to do that more. Many things we see in church today is witchcraft. Manipulation. If you don't give, they, if you don't give this, you are, you are, you are cursed. Uh, if you don't do this, God, God will punish you. These are all manipulation. So that you put pressure on people to give money. It's witchcraft. We use witchcraft methods in the pulpit. A lot of times in the pulpit, just so people can give money. So you, you have to you have to threaten them with curses and condemnation and guilt, you know, keeping guilt. It's all witchcraft, but it is it is a work of the flesh. Even even the adverts we we see on TV is all witchcraft adverts. They want to manipulate your thinking. Yes, the advert they want to manipulate your thinking. Imagine you know sometimes you go to the supermarket and then. There's, you want to buy something, then you see one that you have seen the address. Hey, let me buy this one. You are under witchcraft manipulation. <laughs> they are manipulating your mind, con- controlling your mind. You see, what the world is using is controlling the mind. Simple. You see, when I don't miss the kingdom power retreat, there are many things, even as I sat down to, I, I sat down to develop the, the topics I want to teach. I've not finished, you know, I'm still doing it. And there are certain things I discovered as I sat down to write. You know, <laughs> it's amazing how we sometimes miss certain things. Now, if they can call your spirit or summon you to your meetings, then you are weak. Nobody should be able to call your spirit to occultic meetings. People can do that. Call your spirit, come and stand there. No. When it happens like that, it means that you are without covering. Yes, you are not put because how can they summon your spirit like that? A person with occultic powers can project himself into your dreams to interact with you or to attack you. That one is there. He can project himself like Satan went to Jesus. But for him to call your spirit to their meeting, it means that there's something wrong. It means that you are, your, your spirit is weak. There are, there are times when I've had dreams and I've seen false prophets come to me. You know, one false prophet like that came to me in a dream. Then he said, I should bring him for Paul. For Paul. You want to do something for me. Then I said, sit down. You, I want to know the source of your power. What, what, how, what, where did you get this thing from? Then he said, okay, 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 it's okay, it's okay. You, if you, if you won't do it, that's all. Then he got up and then he left. You know, you see, that's how, what I, I, I understand clearly what Jesus, when the devil went to Jesus, when he said, bow down to me and I'll give you this Sometimes 
people, when they survey in the spirit, they can come, they can project themselves to you because they see that there's something that you can give them. And if your heart is not right, you know, people, some people have dreams and one particular prophet is telling them to take money and stop following me in the dream. <laughs> yeah. I mean, two people in this ministry had that, that dream. Two people, they are, they are here today. They are, here. They, are, they are looking at my face right now. <laughs> he said, the first prophet said, look, take this money. Leave this man. Come and, come and join me. <laughs> yes. And the, the man showed him a lot of money in the dream. So if he was, if they were corrupt, one was money, and I think one was something else. If they were corrupt in their heart, maybe if the devil had planted in their heart corruption, covetousness, and they were thinking of how they can get money at, at a fast pace. Now, in the dream, they would have collected the, the money. Transactions can take place in dreams. If Jesus had bowed to Satan on the uh, amount in the dream, it would have been deemed a transaction. The same way Solomon said, Solomon received the, the wisdom in the dream. So it, it's your heart, your, the state of your heart. If it, were, if it were somebody and God said, ask anything, he would say, Let, give me money. That would have been in his heart. If you are on fire, witches and spiritualists cannot manipulate your dream. Sometimes, when you are under your control, they can actually keep you, give you pictures, bad pictures concerning pe some people you, you will need <laughs> in order to destroy the relationship. That's why you must check your track record. If the dreams you have been having are demonic manipulation dreams and all that, and then you have one dream which is painting somebody, especially if the person is somebody who is coming into your life to bless you. You must check. You may be having a deception dream. That's the last one. Deception dream. Second Corinthians 11, 15. Satan can come as an angel of light. Satan can come as an angel of light to deceive you. Sometimes he can lead you astray from the assembly of the wise. He can just lead you astray like that. He can disconnect you from people who must bless you. Just one dream you had. That's why you have to be discerning. You have to rightly divide the word. Know the voice of God. Know what God has said. Stay within the boundaries of what God has said. Not all Angelic encounters are from God. Satan too has angels. It says, for no wonder Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. In Revelation 2, I said, Michael fought uh, with his angels and the dragon too fought with his angels. There are angels who are under Satan's care. Fallen angels, they can manifest as light. Sometimes you'll literally see that their light is not, ex they are not exuding light. It's just an outline. It's not coming from within. You're not radiating light. So how to limit Satan's access to your dreams? Stay within the boundaries of the word. Avoid extremes. Avoid extremes. Always stay in the middle. Avoid. Don't, don't latch onto extremes. Some people, they, they run from one extreme which is legalism, then they, they jump into the other extreme, which is lawlessness. But the middle ground is life. You are neither legalistic nor lawless. That is the way of, 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 of the cross. Be prayerful. Keep the fire burning. Keep the fire burning. That's, that's one way to keep the devil away from your dreams. Live a pure life. I can't overemphasize purity in the life of a believer. The benefits. Maintain your fellowship with other believers. Recognize 
authority. If you do these things, you can be sure that you can handle anything that comes your way. Let's be on our feet. Let's pray.
I surrender my life. I surrender my vocation. I surrender my ministry. I surrender my finances. I surrender my time. I surrender my peace. I surrender my relationship. I surrender my life. My moral life. I surrender everything to you. If you surrender to him, you keep the best of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to pray and I want you to tell him I surrender all to you this afternoon. I give you full control. I give you full control. I surrender all the keys. I surrender all the keys. Any part of my life that is not surrendered to you, bring me into alignment. Bring me into alignment with divine service. Bring me into alignment with divine order. Bring me to alignment under your authority to submit, to submit to your authority, to yield to your rulership, to yield to your government. That is kingdom. That is kingdom. Anything that is kingdom is outside the reach of the devil. Anything that is kingdom is outside the reach of the devil. When God rules in your head, He is committed. When he rules your finances, he is committed to your finances. When he rules your body, he is committed to your health. When he rules your academic you. when he rules your life, when he rules your life, when you become a vessel for the master, a vessel for the master, separated for the master's use, separated for his use. We are praying this prayer. We are praying for strength, for revival if of our Christian life. Any, anything that has been released on, on you as a tear gas, laziness, that things that will break your appetite for the word. We are coming against those things. Let every manipulation lift. Let every covering lift. Let every weakness go in the name of Jesus. Let there be refilling. Let there be refreshing. Let there be refreshing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let the oil of joy be released. To be released. Oil of joy from morning. The garment of grace for the spirit of heaviness. In the name of Jesus. Whatever has been released through grace. Any seed that have been planted, that have been planted, I put them, I put them now, I put them, I put them in the name of Jesus, I put them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Reverse, 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 reverse. Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, uh, there, are, there, are, there are many things that we, you know, picking, but we can't, we can't, we can't. So let me just pray because we have, I, I believe that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be taking up sometime later, either at the, at the, at the retreat. This week, maybe I will devote one session to prayer of deliverance because there are many things I've seen, but it's like I can't, we can't deal with them all now because of the time and all that. There are some of you who may need to fast, you know, take advantage of tomorrow to Wednesday, the fast. You may you may need different topics, I don't know, but uh, all, well, you may ask, you may have to add certain topics to the, the topics, and I will give topics. From Monday to Wednesday, but if you say that there are things that you need to pray and you need to ask God for mercy and help, especially with, with regard to this Monday that I talk about, you can, you can, you can get some topics from uh, the book, uh, resolve this type of it all. You can ask and, and then pray. You take advantage of this in this and then on the at the retreat, I pray that you will have time. Ghana will not die. We are praying. The Bible says we should pray continually for those in authority. Why? Because the devil is always seeking to use them. And therefore we are praying. The president and the ministers and all those who are in authority. Any good plans they have for Ghana, God should breathe on those good plans. Any evil plan, selfish plan, that will come into their heads. We are coming against those plans. Let those plans pay. Let them let, let those plans perish. In the name of Jesus, the destiny of man is not in the hands of politicians. It's in the hands of the church. The church must arrive in prayer. And the church must begin to take their position. And the legislators to enforce kingdom decree to bring comfort to their needs. In the name of Jesus, we say that coming past in the last day, the mountain of God's power shall be taller than every other mountain, and the nations are run with. In the name of Jesus, Ibrahim Tarama, God give us. In the name of Jesus, the church is strong. The church is taking her place. In the name of Jesus, the banner of Christianity would never come down on this nation. In the name of Jesus, Christ will be exalted above all other banners. In the name of Jesus, power is coming to the church. Unity is coming to the church. Strength is coming to the church. Our God is being healed. Our God is being united. In the name of Jesus, we are taking our place. In the name of Jesus, the reason for the church 
in the gates of hell to open the gates of heaven and to close the gates of hell. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell and I will preserve against it. Jacob said, the Lord was in this place and I didn't know. This is none other than the house of God and this is the gates of heaven. The house of God is the gates of heaven. Thank you, Lord. We give a praise. Father, we bless your name. We thank you for talking in our lives. We pray, oh God, that you continue to teach us, even in our dreams, even while we are relaxing, even while we are thinking about you. Teach us, oh God. Breathe on us. Open the eyes of understanding. Help us to grow in knowledge and in grace. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and give you grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this message. For more of these, kindly visit our website, touchworldministries.com, or download the Apostle Joseph Minta app on Google Play Store. You can also follow Touch World Ministries on Facebook and also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Touch World Ministries. Thank you. Touch World Ministries International. Reach, disciple, equip, and release. Be blessed.